Okay, so today I'm going to talk about the planetary nodes. But what I'm going to try and do first is contextualize the nodes generally. The planetary nodes is quite a large subject. As I discovered when talking with my editor, the book that's on sale, The Healing the Soul, had an extra section on the planetary nodes, which two minutes before going live on air with Kristen on Guiding Stars, we decided was too big to stay in the current book. Two minutes later, first question on air with Kristen was, how's the book on the planetary nodes coming? <laughs> <coughs> I hadn't even fully decided that we weren't going to include that section, so I decided in that moment live. Um, so I'm hoping to finish that work for next year. So it's quite a big subject. It's early in the morning. I'm really appreciative so many people have shown up because this is kind of an intense scheduling, isn't it? So I'm, I'm very, very grateful. So thanks very much. I hope to reward that by at least offering something about the nodes that's interesting and useful. <laughs> so, just to clarify what the nodes are. Oh, the arm one's that one, sorry. Yeah, 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 I got it. So, come with me on a journey. Um, the nodes are simply abstract points in space. They have no inherent substantiality. There is no thing there, no piece of dirt hurtling around space. They are simply an abstract point where a planetary body intersects the ecliptic. The ecliptic being the apparent motion of the sun because of the tilt of the earth that we see the zodiac on. So that circle that we see the zodiac on, a planet crosses coming up and a planet crosses coming down. When it crosses coming up, it's an ascending or north node. When it crosses coming down, it's a descending or south node. Moon orbiting the ecliptic, coming up onto it, ascending north node, circling back down. This is where you'd find the constellations of the zodiac. an abstract point in space, and yet one that Dane Rudyard argued in his pamphlet of 1971, symbolizes, therefore, the entire orbital motion of the planet. Because it's intersecting the ecliptic, it's intersecting the constellations of the zodiac at a certain point. So it's symbolizing the entire planetary motion. That's why it's so full of potential in terms of symbolism. It's an abstract point in space, or two abstract points in space, that symbolize the entire motion of that planetary body. Yes? Yes? <laughs> it just appears to do that because of the graphic. Okay. Normally in astrology, we only look at the nodes of the moon. When I asked the guy who created uh, Windstar software, uh, why they didn't include planetary nodes, his reply in the email was, no one looks at planetary nodes. <laughs> the nodes of the moon. Now, I'd like to spend a brief moment. I, the subject of this talk is the planetary nodes, to show that other planets have nodes too, but I'd like us to contextualize. We've spent all day yesterday learning this method. And Deva mentioned this idea of the wave rising from the ocean. This is a really useful map of that process.
the ocean is the infinite field of consciousness. The totality. On this level of symbol, it is the infinite allness from which everything arises. This is heaven, spirit. In Buddhism, this is the Dharmakaya, the inherent luminosity of everything. From this level, there is no separation. It is non-dual, literally not two. You cannot have two. You cannot have here this and a that. There is only this. There is only that. This is the multidimensional present. Eckhart Tolle has the famous book, The Power of Now. In a sense, the now needs to be expanded in all directions. It's the power of always, is, was, and ever shall be. From this perspective, it's like we have many lives. Or to us, we're talking about reincarnation as if we have these many lives, like separate things going back in time. From this level, there is simply one life manifesting through different space-time. From this level, there is only love. This is the subtle aspect in the creation, the subtle aspect of consciousness, which is only love. Right now, imagine it. Every single aspect of your life, every single worry and concern, every single personal neurosis, relationship struggle, difficulty, Paranoia about astrology and what it means to you. Paranoia about your chart and how it intersects with your loved ones. Waking up in the middle of the night thinking, what am I going to make of all this conference and this madness here? There's only love. At this level, there is no separation and the inherent divinity within you and the inherent divinity within life are one. When I touched the edge of the infinite field of consciousness in my early 20s, there was a moment where I sobbed, sat on a toilet seat in a restroom, crying, sobbing, with the sheer joy and relief as I experienced my life reborn, literally reborn, in a river of this white love. And I was crying for all the times I didn't know that. I was crying out of compassion for myself all the loneliness in teenage years, all the childhood pain, and I just saw it washed away. Love, the infinite field. Here, because of the graphic simplicity, it looks like it's just here. It's not. It's all around here. And this wave is actually just coming out of that allness. Every moment we're here is just a manifestation out of the allness. Right now. And this manifestation, this tendency of desire to separate and express itself is the Pluto level we've been referring to. The desire to express and individualize consciousness. Spirit, if you like. Soul. Dharmakaya in Buddhist terms, Sambhokakaya. Out of this experience of the allness arises a form, a subtle aspect of consciousness, an attachment, a desire to experience life on a deep level. And then we manifest a particular lens, a conditioned self, an ego, Understand this level to this level, and you understand this evolutionary astrological model. The Pluto level in the chart is primarily unconscious. It's primarily existing as the subtle wave arising from the all, an aspect that it's very hard to fully consciously realize, but which momentum 
moves your life. This is the level we can consciously relate to. Family, upbringing, I'm a guy from Northern England, my name's Mark. The kind of parents I had, the kind of school experience, growing up in the Thatcher Reagan years. <laughs> the one thing this geeky intellectual kid liked doing was acting. And uh, because of the school cuts, they closed the school drama society. Hey. But um, I've channeled it into my astrological. <laughs> um, all the particular conditioning issues come out here. But this is an underlying motivational level. And when we understand the contrast between these two levels, we naturally start to understand certain dynamics. For example, Pluto conjunct the south node. The essence of the energy behind the wave is manifesting through the conscious prior life selves. Mm -hmm.